Uh, hello, uh, my name is Heger. So I'm from Google in London. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about generative model-based text-to-speech synthesis. Because Yoshio has already talked about some sort of text-to-speech synthesis and uh, generative model, so there can be some overlap between them. So I'll omit some part uh, afterwards. So first, I will talk about some general background of generative model-based text-to-speech synthesis. Then I will talk about uh, some uh, conventional method based on hidden Markov model and neural networks. Then I will talk about beyond the parametric TTS, including the WaveNet and end-to-end -end text to speech. Finally, I will conclude my presentation and discuss some future research topics. So text, so automatic speech recognition is a mapping problem for a sequence to sequence mapping problem from a uh, audio signal to word. So this is a, a mapping problem from a uh, continuous time series to discrete symbol sequence. So text to speech synthesis is an inverse problem. So that we have a text to be synthesized and we would like to render a speech waveform. This is a sequence to sequence mapping problem from a discrete symbol to a continuous time series. The first one is a kind of classification problem and the second one, text to speech, is usually treated as a regression problem. So how we solve, say, human beings solve this problem? So first we have text or concept to be synthesized, then they are translated into the movement of our muscles. So using the airflow from lung, we first create a vocal source exciting signals uh, using the vocal cord or turbulent noise. Then their frequency characteristics are modulated by the vocal transfer function controlled by articulators. Then finally, we emit speech waveform from our mouth. So the aim of text-to-speech synthesis is to mimic this process by a computer in some way. The typical text-to-speech synthesis system consists of a text analysis and the speech synthesis part. The text analysis part includes sentence segmentation, word segmentation, text normalization, part of speech tagging, and pronunciation prediction. So most of them are doing uh, natural language processing and performs discrete to discrete mapping. Then the speech synthesis part performs the discrete to continuous mapping, including a prosody prediction and waveform generation. So both of them are important to achieve the high quality text to speech synthesis. So there are three major approaches in the speech synthesis part of text to speech synthesis. The first one is rule based form and synthesis. So we extract some rule from the uh, data and then manipulate, uh, for example, format frequencies or duration. The second one is a sample-based concatenated speech synthesis. So first we uh, record huge amount of speech data, then segment it into the small chunks. Then it defines our target cost and concatenation cost and find the best unit sequence given the linguistic information. The third approach uh, the mo is model-based speech synthesis. So I will mainly talk about this one. So in this approach, we model the probability distribution of speech, then, uh, sorry, the given text. So then once we can get such kind of probability distribution, we can draw a sample from that distribution, then synthesize speech waveform. So first, I would like to formulate the speech synthesis problem in the probabilistic manner. So in the typical speech synthesis system, so we have four random variables. The first one is a recorded speech data. Then the second one is a transcription associated with the speech data. Then we also have a speech, sorry, the text to be synthesized. Then these three random variables are observed, say the given. Then finally, we would like to predict the speech waveform given these observed variables. Then this because this one is unknown, so this is an unobserved variable. So how we solve this problem? So first, we estimate posterior probability of x synthesized speech given these three random variables. Once we can get such posterior probability distribution, we can draw a sample from that distribution. So in a probabilistic graphical model representation, we can represent this dependency in this way. So here, we, uh, I use the, these blue ones as an observed variables, and then the white one as an unobserved variable. 
No, I will talk about third one approach. No, no. But the second one mm -hmm. is very similar depending in the, in the size of the unit you are putting the... Uh, I think it, in some sense it is similar. So it, you can view it as second approach is a non-parametric method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but getting that predictive distribution is hard. So we introduce auxiliary variables. The first one is acoustic feature. The second one is a linguistic feature, and then model, which learn mapping between linguistic information and acoustical information. <coughs> so we treat this as a random variable. So by integrating and marginalizing over all possible combination, this is still a valid, say they are equivalent. So as a graph, so that you can represent in this way, so that from the waveform, we extract acoustic feature, from the text, we extract the linguistic feature, then the dependency is modeled by the model. Then we extract the linguistic feature to be synthesized, then draw, then predict the acoustic feature, then draw a waveform from this distribution. But this is hard, so we approximate this uh, distribution by a joint maximization, like the map estimation. So instead of integrating it all over all possible random variables, it takes the best possible one based on the joint probability. So in this figure, so we treat these as a random variable, but find the best one. Then once we get the best one, we draw the sample from this distribution. However, this is still hard. So we, decompose, we approximate, we introduce another approximation. So we perform each, we perform each uh, maximization independently or sequentially. So in this way, so we can decompose the problem into the five maximization problems and one random sampling. So, so first we extract most likely acoustic features, then extract most likely linguistic features, then the model between these two and the estimate model parameters. Then extract the linguistic feature from the text to be synthesized, then predict the most likely acoustic feature given the extracted linguistic information and the trained model. Finally, we draw the sample from the uh, predicted acoustic features. So in this framework, we have three types of representations, the acoustic features, linguistic features, and mapping between these two. So what kind of linguistic feature are we using? So it in includes something like the sentence level information, phrase level information, word, syllable, form, such as length, intonation, part of speech, syllable stress uh, for, uh, for tonal languages, tone, uh, voicing, and manner. So this kind of information. So basically, they are based on the knowledge about spoken language. So we need, uh, so we compile our knowledge into uh, some resources like lexicon, letter to sound rules, tokenizer, tagger, parser, and phonology rules. So based on this uh, knowledge, we can extract linguistic information from the text. The first kind of thing are we using for the acoustic representation? So basically, we are using a book order or source filter model. So we know that, so that we have some speech production process. So first we encode uh, both source excitation information, like <laughs> fundamental frequency or periodicity that characterizes the ratio between the voiced and the unvoiced uh, signal in the source excitation signal. Then we also uh, encode uh, vocal tract information as a spectrum representation, like capsule coefficients or line spectral pair. However, so that they are the parameters of source excitation model, but we actually don't know what kind of parameters are used to synthesize these parameters, so th to synthesize speech waveform. So we fit this model to the observed signal, then use extracted acoustic features as a parameters to be modeled by the acoustic model. So, other, so from this point of view, so that we can consider rule-based TTS as this way. 
So first, we extract the vocoder parameters, and then extract linguistic features by text analysis. Then we compile rules from the uh, knowledge, from the speech data, by expert. <laughs> then once we can get a lot of rules extracted by experts, we can apply them, given the linguistic feature extracted from the uh, text analysis part, then synthesize speech waveform. So, Rule-based synthesis is using the handcrafted rules on knowledge-based features. Then, HMM-based speech synthesis or statistical parametric speech synthesis replaced the handcrafted rules by an expert by statistical model. So now we run the mapping between linguistic information and acoustical information by a statistical model. So basically, statistical parametric speech synthesis is a just replaced rules by a statistical model, but at least we can learn the mapping between the linguistic and acoustical information from data. So next, I'd like to briefly talk about a generative acoustic model for parametric TTS. So the very first version of statistical parametric speech synthesis used HMMs our old friend. So it is context-dependent sub-world HMM as a unit, for example, phoneme level HMM. And each HMM has a phonetic context, syllable, word, or phrase level context. Because the number of linguistic features to be considered are too many, so their combination is to be, say, millions or tens of millions. So it is impossible to have all possible combination within the training data, so we need to reduce the number of parameters to be estimated. So we typically use context dependent, sorry, uh, distance based clustering to reduce the number of parameters. But, so at least, this is based on the distance tree. So once you look at the distance tree, you can, say, learn something. So how, say, linguistic information is translated into acoustic features by looking at the rules applied at each node of the decision tree. However, so HMM has some limitations, like non-smooth stepwise statistics, so smoothing was essential, and it was difficult to use high-dimensional acoustic features like row spectra, so we must use row-dimensional approximations like uh, capsule coefficients. Then, uh, data fragmentation problem because the decision tree splits the data into subclusters, so it is not efficient. So in the past 10 to 15 years, a lot of research has been done to address these issues. So what kind of alternative model is possible? So HMM is basically handling the alignment problem. So because linguistic information and acoustic information can be a very different lengths. So HMM handles how to assign the linguistic information and acoustic information. Then the decision tree actually performs the mapping from linguistic to acoustic information. So for a given linguistic information, by traversing the decision tree, you will find a Gaussian distribution associated with each cluster. So this is actually the mapping from linguistic to the statistics of acoustic features. So this is just a regression tree, so it makes more sense to use more powerful regression model like neural network. The first version of neural network-based acoustic model for statistical parametric speed synthesis used simple feed-forward neural network. So based on the alignment information between acoustic features and the linguistic information, you can compose a pairs of frame-level linguistic feature and the frame-level acoustic feature. Once we can get such kind of thing, then you can just train the neural network that takes linguistic feature as an input, and then acoustic feature as an output. Then you can train such a network based on a squared error criterion. So once this is trained, the output from the neural network is a conditional expectation of acoustic features given linguistic feature at the current frame. So it can replace decision trees and the Gaussian distribution by a single neural network. But because the speech has sequential nature, so it makes more sense to use a recurrent neural network instead of feed-forward neural network. So in this case, we can, we also have the, say, frame-level linguistic feature and the frame-level acoustic feature, 
but they, we can just train the mapping using the recurrent neural network. So in the feed-forward neural network case, the output from the neural network is a conditional expectation of acoustic feature given the linguistic feature at the current frame. But once we use a uh, recurrent neural network, the output from the network is a conditional expectation of acoustic feature given the linguistic feature from the first frame to the current frame. So it can utilize more information to predict acoustic features. So we found that recurrent neural network can generate smoothly varying acoustic features. So we no longer need uh, smoothing. And because of the layered architecture, we can use high dimensional, highly correlated acoustic features like raw spectra with, uh, in the statistical parametric speed synthesis. Then, because of, thanks to the uh, distributed representation, it, can, it no longer suffered from the data fragmentation issue, and it is much more efficient compared with the local representation used in, in the HMM-based speed synthesis. Then the neural network-based approach is now mainstream in research and the products. Models like feed-forward neural network, mixture density network, recurrent neural network, LSTM, highway network, and generative adversarial network have been applied to statistical parametric speed synthesis and then working very successful. There, we also have products uh, using the uh, recurrent neural network-based text-to-speech. So the currently uh, about one-third of uh, Languages in the server-side TTS from Google are using the recurrent neural network-based text-to-speech, and the remaining two-thirds are using the concatenative TTS. Then uh, almost all mobile, so that we also have text-to-speech for mobile devices for on Android, and almost all of them are using the recurrent neural network-based text-to-speech synthesis. So next, I'd like to talk about the beyond parametric text-to-speech synthesis. So, in the text, so the aim of text-to-speech synthesis is mapping the text into speech waveform. Then the current framework performs the linguistic features to acoustic feature mapping. But if we look at the speech generation process, actually we have articulators as an intermediate representation. But in the current framework, we are implicitly model them within the model parameters. So they are, we don't explicitly uh, model articulatory movement, so that we directly learn the mapping from linguistic to the acoustic features. But as uh, Yoshio mentioned, let's say the final goal of text to speech is from text to the speech waveform. So can we do such kind of direct mapping to achieve the high quality text to speech synthesis? So one step towards that direction is from the uh, knowledge-based features to learn the features. So one possibility is to use autoencoder to learn the low-dimensional representation of acoustic features. For example, in this way, in this uh, approach, so input and output are both, say, low, high-dimensional spectra. But by having the bottleneck layer, so you can have some low-dimensional representation of spectra. Then we can model that it as a acoustic feature rather than uh, knowledge-based features like capsular coefficients or fundamental frequency. So it gets some positive results compared with uh, conventional approaches like capsular coefficients or uh, line spectral pairs. The second approach is to how can we encode, how can we avoid using the linguistic information then run such representation uh, by using auto unsupervised learning. So one possibility is to use a word vector uh, so embedding as our input. So one possibility is to use a recurrent neural network based on language model and then extract some linguistic feature, so word embeddings in the, instead of linguistic features. It is not that successful at this moment. So because we are using, say, we don't put any information about acoustics. Yeah. Yeah, why would you expect that? Acoustics? Yeah, that's an issue. Yeah, so the people tried, then it doesn't work well. <laughs> so, 
So at least they found that so you, they can avoid using part of speech tagging or parsers with word embedding. So that is one of the motivation because they wanted to so they, for example, for low resource languages, it is hard to develop part of a speech tagger or parser. So they wanted to avoid developing such thing. But so of course it is better. So if we, so you can get higher quality by having a part of a speech tagger or a dependency parser. So in that sense, it doesn't work well, but at least it is better than not using a word vector. Yeah. So I think that we also need to, as Yosha mentioned, I think we need to include some acoustic information to extract some uh, embedding, word level or phoneme level or whatever embeddings. I think the current uh, acoustic word embedding can be one possibility to be used uh, in this framework. So, as I mentioned, we introduced many approximations to derive the current framework, but they can degrade degrade the quality of synthetic speech. So we would like to relax these approximations. The first step is to jointly optimize acoustic feature extraction and acoustic model training. So instead of doing the uh, stepwise maximization, you can jointly extract acoustic feature and train the acoustic model in the single objective function. So that is one step towards the uh, less approximated, say, completely uh, approximation free text to speech synthesis. So, this kind of approach have been explored, for example, uh, HMM and the neural network with a uh, source filter model integrated into the model. Then, the other step is that, okay, let's remove intermediate representation. Let's go directly from the linguistic information to the, say, waveform. So instead of learning the, the jointly learning acoustic model and the acoustic features, let's just learn the generative model that actually generate waveform given linguistic information. So such a plot is, so our old friend linear predictive coefficients is actually the generative model of acoustic uh, waveform, but it is too simple. So we would like to use more sophisticated model like or sample RNN. So, as Yosha mentioned, so that we can decompose the joint probability of samples by a, a product of autoregressive uh, probabilities. So, in the sample RNN case, this probability was modeled by the uh, recurring network, but on the WaveNet, so we model this probability using the uh, convolutional neural network. It has three major key components. The one is a causal dilated convolution, so the tree-like structure to have the large, uh, long time density. Then the, go ahead. Yep. You use 10 samples. Yes, Therefore, yes. you can only model the filter. How yes. many, what is N here? Uh, about, say, 3,000. 3,000? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. In the 16 kilohertz sampling. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so the get it uses uh, convolution, residual, and skip connection to have powerful nonlinearity. And then the most interesting thing for me is using the softmax at output. So with this framework, speech synthesis is no longer a regression problem. It is more like classification problem. So the dilated convolution is, so as you know, speech has long-term dependency. So at least we have 100 millisecond uh, co articulation effect. Then 100 millisecond in 16 kilohertz sampling is more like 1,200, so 1,600 sampling. If we use normal recurrent neural network or LSTM, it starts failing to learn such long-term dependency around 400 samples. So in the dilated convolution, it uses this kind of, say, tree-like structure to explicitly capture the dependence, long-term dependency. In the uh, WaveNet, we are, at this moment, we are using the uh, 10 stack, so the 1,024, and then we are stacking this unit three times. So it can uh, extract about 3,000 time steps. So it is more like 200 milliseconds. 
Then this figure shows the architecture of WaveNet. So it is pretty complicated. So it so each this one, each residual block is a uh, basically this part. So this is each residual block. Then each residual block contains a uh, convolution, gated activation, convolution with residual connection. Then each residual block have a skip connection, and then they are summed, and then we have uh, additional uh, rectified or linear nonlinearity after the skip connection. Then finally, we have a softmax uh, output layer to represent uh, probability. Go ahead. Privateness. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's an interesting question. So the base carib, so this architecture is originally uh, inspired from the Pixel CNN. So that I think that Aaron did quite a lot of experiments on Pixel CNN. So I think he derived this architecture from that. Then he mainly worked on how many dilation and stack is required to achieve the good performance. Then he did such kind of a lot of experiments for that, but this architecture itself comes from the Pixel CNN. <laughs> yeah. So the then the output is a softmax, sort of which gives a uh, probability sample given previous samples. Then, so we are using softmax. So in a speech, so the speech is a waveform, it's an analog signal. But whenever we want to use it in the computer, basically we perform uh, sampling and quantization. So usually, even we after the quantization in the text-to-speech, we treat them as a continuous value and then use Gaussian distribution or whatever to uh, model. However, in the WaveNet, we treat that they are actually classes rather than continuous values. So imagine that this is a language modeling problem. So each of them is a, how can I say, a kind of vocabulary. Then to model the probability of this, so you have these observed words, and then would like to predict the land probability of this one given these previous words. So this is more like language modeling problem. So instead of, so what is the motivation? So if we use Gaussian, that means we are assuming speech is distributed as Gaussian distribution. But actually, it isn't. So it can be unimodal, it can be multimodal, it can be highly skewed distribution. But with Gaussian, you can't model such thing. Of course, by using the Gaussian mixture or other types of distribution, you can. But by using the softmax, basically, you can represent it as a, so you can have arbitrary shaped distribution. Then when I went to the interspeech, I met uh, Professor, Professor Jafsky, and he mentioned that he was very happy because now TTS is a kind of, say, language modeling problem rather than, say, more, how can I say, you no longer need speech knowledge to do the speech synthesis. That's actually, for, actually sad for me, but yeah, for <laughs> these NLP researchers, it is really happy because they can utilize their knowledge about language modeling or techniques to do the speed synthesis, to tackle the synthesis problem. Of course, the dependency is much, much longer than normal language, but actually the prob problem formulation is exactly the same. So, WaveNet, it, it, so the previous WaveNet description is about for the unconditional modeling, but if we want to use it for text-to-speech, we need to give some uh, linguistic information. So, in this case, so first we extract the linguistic features and we get embedding at each time step. Then we feed uh, this embedding at each residual block. Then we can get uh, probability distribution of sample given the embedding information. So em linguistic information embedded at each time step. So conventional audio generative models have many assumptions. For example, 
usually they are, they assume stationary. So your speech is not stationary signal, but in a short window, for example, two, 200, sorry, 20 milliseconds, you can assume that, okay, speech signal is stationary. So this conventional audio generative model, which is stationary process, can be fitted within this window. But once we want to apply it to the long term, uh, if we want to use it, say, the long window or model entire speech, it is impossible because it can it cannot model non-stationary process. Then linear, the LPC is a, one of the conventional audio generative model is linear, but relationship between uh, audio samples can be highly non-linear. Then the LP, LPC is a Gaussian process, but speed signals are highly non-Gaussian. So on the WaveNet, it is sample by sample model, and it is highly nonlinear. And in addition to the uh, previous audio samples, it can take linguistic information, information or fundamental frequency as an additional input to condition the probability distribution. So it is much, um, it is highly flexible to model distribution of raw audio signals. Then, because it uses the softmax at output rather than the Gaussian, so it can represent arbitrary shaped signal distribution. So in the WaveNet paper, we compared uh, existing parametric TTS and concatenative TTS and WaveNet using the exactly the same data set, and we found that WaveNet was much better than production quality uh, unit selection and parametric TTS. So I will play some samples. I will play HMM, LSTM, concatenative, and WaveNet. The avocado is a pear-shaped fruit with leathery skin, smooth edible flesh in a large stone. The avocado is a pear-shaped fruit with leathery skin, smooth edible flesh in a large stone. Otto is a pear-shaped fruit with leathery skin, smooth edible flesh in a large stone. The avocado is a pear-shaped fruit with leathery skin, smooth edible flesh in a large stone. So the parametric TTS often have some uh, artificial sound or muffleness, and the concatenative TTS often have some, have some glitches or jump in the prosody, but WaveNet ha has, is less affected by these issues. So, however, even with WaveNet, we still have approximations. So that I think the next step will be like uh, directory mapping directly mapping from the text and waveform, then draw a sample from this uh, probability distribution. This will be the second, the next step towards, uh, like, let's say, free Bayesian text-to-speech synthesis. Then this can be, we can go even further based on the Bayesian statistics. So we can treat mapping as a latent variable, and we can still marginalize it over all possible variables. Of course, this is very hard, but at least we can approximate. So you may know that neural network training is more like a stochastic process. Every time you train the network, you can get different results. This is more like a random sampling of model parameters from the posterior distribution of model parameters given data. Then, at least if you <laughs> Uh, and some multiple uh, trained models, then at least you can approximate this free Bayesian framework using the fin finite set of trained acoustic model. Okay, then I'd like to conclude my presentation. So I talked about generative model based text to speech, formulated it in a probabilistic manner, and then the current framework used our acoustic model to learn the mapping uh, from linguistic information to the acoustic information. But we are shifting towards uh, engineer from the to engineered features to the unsupervised learned feature. We are also trying to reduce approximation towards uh, integrated or free Bayesian end-to-end text-to-speech. So in terms of naturalness, previous until WaveNet, so the concatenative TTS was significantly better than the say, generative model-based TTS, but after WaveNet or sample and 
RNN. Actually, the naturalness is better than concatenated TTS. And then, as Yoshua uh, showed, it is much more flexible. So you can train the single model from multiple speakers, and then you can just condition it on, the, say, embeddings or speaker ID to control the voice. So the text-to-speech is now shifting from the concatenative TTS to the generative model-based TTS. So for the future, I would first I'd like to talk about the beyond text-to-speech. So text-to-speech is now used on conversational assistant like Alexa, Google Home, Cortana, Siri. Then on this domain, texts aren't free contained. For example, if we want, so if we want to know the, how to pronounce a word, then sometimes we need more context. For example, Houston or Houston, we don't, without knowing the, say, the location information, you cannot resolve whether this is pronounced as Houston or Houston. So Japanese human name is really difficult to be, it's really hard to predict the pronunciation from the Chinese characters. In that case, we need to know that information. Then one possibility, for example, if you have a celebrity name case, you can access some knowledge graph to resolve the uh, information. So the text is not fully contained in that domain. Other thing is, if we want to put correct emphasis on the particular word given the user query, we cannot resolve that information only from the text. We need to know the user query to resolve which word is more important. So the text to speech will be more like, so more, you use more context to achieve the higher quality speech synthesis. So the next one is beyond generative TTS. So these generative models are trained from the recorded speech data. So the, it represents the speech, so the model is representing the process behind the speech production. So these models are trained to minimize error against human produced speech. So the land model is more like a general speaker. However, speech is for communication. So our goal is to maximize the amount of information to be received by listener. But the current framework is completely missing the listener law in the training process or model itself. So I think we need to introduce listener role within the training or model itself. Like one possibility is using the reinforcement learning. Another possibility is using uh, adversarial, uh, generative adversarial network, like say discriminator is a kind of listener. So I think that will be the next step in the text-to-speech synthesis research. Thank you very much.